Hey everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Reed Johnson. I'm an engineer here at RoboFlow and today we're going to talk about device management or specifically how we can help set up and install the necessary software on the devices we're running inference on, but then as well as manage them. So manage the number of streams, what we're processing, what we're running workflows on, all of that. So let's get started. Kind of just a brief agenda of what we're going to be going over is device management, where it's at today, um, and what it does, a brief, brief architecture um, of what is kind of going on behind the scenes, uh, demo, and then future features. So where we're looking to go and add and improve um, in the future and going forward. So a device management overview. So why device management? So it is a centralized, convenient control over deployed inference devices. So Many of you have probably deployed deployed inference servers um, throughout your facilities, through R&D, whatever it might be. Um, and it is kind of tedious to keep track of um, where they're deployed, what's running on them, all that sort of thing. So we want to add a feature that makes that easier to control. Basically a control center or control panel um, for your inference servers or your devices. Um, streamline updates and conf configuration changes from a single interface. So a control panel where you can see all your inference devices um, and make updates to them in a simple, easy manner. Uh, and then enhance in visibility into device performance. Um, so seeing what devices are out there, what kind of hardware it's running on, what GPU, maybe the OS, that sort of thing um, is all what device management um, is incorporating. So some key capabilities, live frame mon monitoring. So you can see the latest inference frame from your device. What is it looking at? Has anything changed? Just basically maybe a sanity check of everything is running as it should. Remote model updates. So you can deploy updated workflows without manual intervention. So in the app, which I'll show you, you can change the workflow that's running, um, updates, um, things on the device through the control panel. Device control, so you can restart your devices um, and apply configuration changes, and then system insights. So um, access to detailed information such as logs and some performance metrics, we'll be adding more and more of that kind of in the future as we go. Um, this is kind of what it looks like today in the app. Again, I'll show you in the demo. You can kind of see the device. You can see a, a video stream. You can see logs and some device information, but I'll dive into this um, in the demo. Architecture, very high level, is on the right side here. You can kind of see a device. This, in this case, it's an edge device, a Jetson device that's in an IP enclosure connected to a machine vision camera. And on that device, the inference server, RoboFlow inference server is running. Now, what we have is kind of a sidecar onto that, which is the device manager container. And that is what kind of allows this device, these device manager features um, which I'm going to be showing here. So it's an addition on to that inference server container, as many of you probably know today. And we've architected it and we're architecting it to work in firewalled environments. Um, so basically from a high level, it sends out a heartbeat to the RoboFlow app saying, hey, here's my device info. Here's my latest image. If we're requesting to see the live view um, and some logs information amongst a few other things. In return, we can send back commands such as, you know, restart, update work, flow among some other things. Um, so from a very high level, this is kind of what is happening behind the scenes, um, but it does not do justice of, of what we've actually implemented, but let's dive into a demo. So the scenario here is I have my workspace. I have just got say an NVIDIA Jetson device um, and I want to set it up, run inference and start processing or capturing frames um, in my factory, let's say. So I have a, a Jetson device, I just got it. How do I get everything running so I know I can capture images and run inference in a convenient way for those of you have, who have gone through this process, it's not easy and sometimes can be a really, really big pain. Um, so what we have here is this devices tab you'll see on this left-hand side. And in it, you can see I have a bunch of devices that I've set up and configured already. I can see everything that is, um, all the devices that are online, that are stopped, that sort of high level information. But the scenario is I just got a device, I need to set it up. So we have this little add device um, module up here and I can go through and I can type in 
what I want my device to be called. So I'll just say like device two, I can select the workflow that I want that device to be running on um, after we install this. So I select the workflow ID, my camera type. We support a number of machine vision cameras, Lucid, Basler, or if it's an RTSP feed, or it's like a USB camera, that sort of thing. I'll select Basler camera in this case. Um, it's about 30 FPS. The resolution is 1920 by 1200. Uh, you can enable TRT, which just allows it to inference at faster speeds, but at um, the compromise of a compile time. So I'm going to leave that at false. And then tail scale. So we use tail scale for managing some devices and, and sort of RD efforts. Uh, I'm going to leave that blank. But the important part is I'm going to generate a command, and I'm going to see these sort of things. So I can do this wget, which basically pulls down an install script. So our team has put together an install script that um, will install the necessary drivers, resources on your device um, to run inference and process that machine vision camera. And then I'm going to run that device with this list of commands here. So I won't go into deep uh, detail of what these are, but basically I would go into my device. I would run this. And now after I run it, it's going to go through install inference server side, install that device manager, install the drivers. And then it starts up and just starts running. So you can see here, um, I have a, this is an SSH into a device where I'm running and now it's processing frames and we're good to go. So I'm not going to run it on an actual device right now since I've already done that. But once you do so, actually I'll hit generate command here. Um, you'll see that that device is now in a provisioning state. Um, and then once it spins up and starts sending those heartbeats, it goes into this running state. Like you see this one right here. So that's all you have to do. And uh, in, in a matter of minutes, sometimes you'll have your devices online connected to the RoboFlow app where you can control it. So I'm going to click into it. And what we'll actually see is a number of things. There's me, there's my forehead. Um, and there's uh, kind of the control panel of what it looks like today. You have your device name, you have your video stream. So this updates at a relatively low rate right now. It's about every 10 seconds. Um, and you'll see the bounty box that says person. I'm running a, a simple uh, Coco model. Um, and then some device information, name, status, container name, IP address, MAC address. Um, we'll be adding to this in the future, I'm sure. And then logs, you know, here's what's going on internally, kind of a sanity check or things are going wrong. I can look into the logs and say, hey, here's what's going on because I can see it in the logs and I can take action rather than having to go to the device, um, plug in a monitor or do that sort of thing. It just kind of abstracts you from that and makes life a little easier when managing devices at scale. So let's dig into some of the, the features, the cool parts of it. Many times when you um, plug in a device, first thing you might wanna do is um, collect data. So we have this live sampling on a 30 or 60 second timer. That's why that went off. But I can actually change the workflow that's running. And I click on this select workflow and I can go to, let's go to data collection. So I actually wanna collect data from my image and send it to a RoboFlow project. Once I update that, it's gonna ask me to restart device. And what that means is it has to actually um, restart the device to actually pull that new workflow that we're going to be running so then we can do it. This is going to take about 45 seconds. Um, what it's doing is actually propagating that command back down to the device. The device manager is reading it, going, okay, time to restart, restarting the service, pulling the new workflow, and then spinning up again. Um, so that takes a little bit of time to propagate, but I'll show you the workflow that we just changed it to. If I go to the workflow panel, I can see data collection, what we just set it to. And that's just a simple workflow of a RoboFlow data set upload, grabbing the image and then uploading it to this project here. And now it's running. So I should see these images start flowing into my RoboFlow project right here. Um, again, more cool images of my forehead. Um, and now they're flowing into here. And once they're in here, I can actually go ahead and go through my typical annotation workflow of going from on aside, on assigned to annotating them and then adding them to my data set where then I can actually train a custom model and then deploy that back to the device. Um, so the, just kind of showing the, the different modes you can enable and, and go through um, with a management service such as this. So 
you can also, instead of switching between workflows, you can go ahead and update workflows. So this is one that's just running that YOLO model I showed before, uh, detecting me, drawing a bounding box, a label. We can do and actually just add on. We can just go and let's say we want to add maybe like a, a blur um, to myself. So I will do this. It's going to blur me. Let's just bump that to a, a high level of blur. I can save it. And I go back to my device um, here. Let's switch from data collection because we don't want to collect data anymore. Switch back to the production one, the one I just edited. And now it is going to send that command back down to the device saying, hey, update workflow. It's going to propagate. It's going to restart um, in just a second here. And what is happening, kind of switching back to this guy is that needs that command needs to go back down to the device manager container device manager container says hey here's the actions i need to take let's take them it does them and it spins back up and then that sends new heartbeat with new information back to the app and should be spinning up here in just a few seconds and we'll see that new um information here in the app shortly There we go. We should see that here in just a second. Oop. There we go. Um, and now we're back up and running. You can actually uh, run a few different things. Like I have this segmentation one, which does. Da -da -da. Oh, okay. I know what I did. It was supposed to blur me, and I actually made a mistake in my response. I'm not sending the blurred one. Output image. Let's just fix that. There we go. I'm now going to go back and update this. There we go. Let's uh, let's make sure we get that in place. And now, once that propagates, it'll show up and it will blur me. Um, so just kind of showing from a high level of like, hey. Here is what is possible today. Here's what we're kind of shooting for and making um, life easier to manage your devices, especially at scale. Um, while that change is taking place, let's go back um, to here and show you. So where we're at, now here's where we're headed. So future device management features. Um, alerts and notifications. So automated alerts on downtime and errors that are happening. Um, you know, my device went down at 3 a.m. tonight last night. I want to know when that happened and for how long. So having those sorts of insights into, into your devices. Stream management. So right now you're just seeing one stream, but we are adding functionality to um, start, pause, stop, delete device streams with support for several streams on one device. Um, enhanced live streaming. You may have noticed that live stream updates every 10 seconds, so a little bit clunky. We're improving that to be more real time, higher FPS um, in the app to see better idea of what's going on. Deeper insights, so detailed in device information and bandwidth metrics for better resource planning. So maybe how much space is left on my device or what size the GPU, um, those sorts of things. And then broader device support. So you just saw it running on a Jetson Edge device. Um, this is going to be applicable to, you know, whether it's an Edge device, a server or dedicated deployments in the cloud. Um, so being much more broader than just uh, an edge device. So let me just go back. And now you can see here, it updated the workflow. It's blurring me, um, that sort of stuff. The workflow you're running can be anything that you can dream up in workflow. So it can be very complicated um, beyond just this simple YOLO model I'm showing. 